In this episode, I talk about how to craft a compelling elevator pitch. Welcome to episode 77 of the Honest Entrepreneur Show. My name's Tom Ross and let's get into it. For anyone watching rather than listening on YouTube right now, you can probably see I'm getting like sleepy little eyes. We're drifting off here. I think it's the heat of this office. It's the end of the day. We've just batch recorded a bunch of these episodes and I love doing this show, but something about it, I just kind of get into this trance-like state by the end. So if I nod off halfway through this question, whoever's asking it, I apologize. This question is from Tamar, the nicest guy in the world. I struggle with how to tell people what I do. Any tips on developing a good elevator speech would be amazing. Uh, Rachel, great job on the voiceover. Tama is the nicest guy in the world. I'm not even going to go into detail. I've shown him enough love. Actually, no, I've never enough love for Tama. All the hearts for Tama. Tama is a sweetheart. Um, elevator pitch. Man, it's a toughie. I'm not going to lie. This is something that I have not historically nailed myself but i i definitely recognize the power in having a very solid elevator pitch before i try and disseminate your questioning and give a valuable answer um side note i do get jealous of people that have that super easy like i've been at dinner parties where uh, one of my friends is a pilot and it's like what do you do i'm a pilot and people are like damn that's impressive damn i immediately understand what that is and uh I'm there being like, well, uh, I run a company. Technically, it's uh, like a marketplace for designers. but uh, And, and they'll be like, oh, so you do uh, design work for clients. I'm like, not really. No. Do you know Amazon? It's kind of like that. But equally, it's not. Like, it sucks. I hate having that conversation. I've had it for years. Um, so, yeah, I mean, aside from just being able to, like, sell yourself better, I think just avoiding social uncomfortableness is it's a pretty good motivation to nail that elevator pitch. Because when you've got something that slips right off the tongue, and kind of hammers home with people. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good thing. So my advice, my advice would be, um, like anything else, devote time, treat it like a project that you can actually plan. I think what people tend to do, myself included, is they ignore it until they get asked to, you know, say what they do. And then they fumble it. They get short-term pain of like, oh, fuck, that was uncomfortable. Uh, like I need to come up with something better and then they forget about it again until the next time that happens so like anything if you were coming up with a headline to your website or um, you know a slogan or, or whatever it is you would sit down and devote like project time for nailing that so same thing for your elevator pitch and the irony is if you nail your elevator pitch it probably will actually inform your marketing your website headline your copy and all that kind of stuff so there's all kinds of side benefits going on so what I would do is I would put together several variants. I would survey and see a response from your audience. I would put it on stories, on Instagram and that kind of thing. And I would say like, which one's clearer, A or B? Like, which do you prefer? Like A, B, C or D? That kind of thing. I would get some real feedback. Equally, I would take them for a test drive in the real world. So if you're like a cocktail mixer, I don't know why I said that. It's like 1950s or something. But if, if you're at some networking event, where you're having to introduce yourself over and over and over again, right? and you've got three variants which you've conceived of by having a real brainstorm session about this, then take them for a test drive in the real world. Like keep mixing through different versions and just see like which one seems to be hitting home more than the others. So that would be my honest advice. That is something I've done in the past. I'm still not perfect at it. So maybe I'm not like the expert to give advice on this. Um, something that's worked for me is realizing it's about more than just the words so um for me a lot of it is from like the emotions and the enthusiasm that i associate with it and it's been proven right body language tonality eye contact these things are whatever it is 70 80 percent of how humans communicate the minority is the actual words so i've met people that are like telling me relatively compelling words and very clear words about what they do but they're boring as hell and so I'm like I literally don't give a fuck not being horrible um and then I've had people that are like a little bit vague but I'm like oh man they're a really like bubbly like enthusiastic character they seem super passionate about what they do and I'm not sure I fully get my head around it but that's awesome anyway so I try and be that guy um and I can tell sometimes I'm like losing people they say what do you do 
And I'm like, well, I run this startup company. Um, we're in the graphic design space and we, we provide the resources that designers use day to day. For me, I actually have to use an analogy. So I'll be like, see that wine there with the label? Well, the font on the label, a designer made that and he would have bought the font to put on the label. That's the kind of stuff we sell. Um, but if I'm losing them through that analogy, then I kind of pivot into like, yeah, and we got this amazing team here and they're awesome. And like, it feels like a family and I freaking love coming to work and we get cool shit done every day. And when I kind of go into that gear, they're like, oh yeah, that does sound great. You know, that's going to be more interesting to them. So um, as well as brainstorming, try and think like, what are you trying to put across? Are you trying to you know, like get the clarity on what you do to sell services? Are you trying to impress people at dinner parties? Like, what is it? Because there's going to be a difference. If you're doing this in a kind of pitch-like format, it's going to be different than if you're doing it on a first date and you're just trying to come across as like this passionate, enthusiastic guy to the girl opposite. So that would be my advice, man. Keep on being awesome. I appreciate you as well as everyone else listening and watching today's show. Question of the day. Do you struggle with elevator pitches? And if so, are you brave enough to share yours in the comments? Because I'll be so intrigued to see how everyone pitches what it is they do. Thank you so, so much for watching this episode. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm really enjoying the YouTube show. If you are too, then be sure to hit the subscribe icon and tick the little bell to get notifications when I post new content on this platform. 